Hi everyone, now that it's getting cold, it's time to start designing circuits again. Now that I'll actually have a little extra time. So what I'm doing is taking from version 2.0 of the solar sun jar and I'm going to see if I can increase the efficiency of how it actually charges the supercapacitors. And how we're going to do that is we're going to check out ZMDI uh, manufacturing an evaluation kit. And this is for the ZSPM 4523 chip. Basically what this uh, chip does, it's a uh, MPPT uh, charge controller made for a single supercapacitor. And the reason why this sounds great on paper is the way the version 2.0 and actually version 1.0 solar sun jar charges the supercapacitor is it simply takes the power from a shell solar solar cell, 100 milliamps maximum, uh, goes through a blocking diode to make sure the power doesn't backflow into the uh, solar cell at nighttime, and then couples directly to the supercapacitor. And the um, voltage termination is basically done by a Zener diode to keep it from overcharging the supercapacitor. What this is, is MPPT, so I can cut out the blocking diode, which is a potential form of loss of power, and the Zener diode for the vol voltage termination, so it doesn't overcharge it, which is very inefficient. It was just a quick little thing for me. So this should fix two problems, plus since uh, theoretically it should charge the supercapacitor at least double or at least twice as fast, we could possibly raise the amount of light because we'll have a better charge efficiency, we'll get more of a charge into our supercapacitors, and depending upon how good it does, we might actually be able to add a second supercapacitor to this and really make the light really bright uh, for, the amount of, this, for the same amount of charge time that I get out of this. So let's open up the box and see what they sent me with this evaluation kit. Okay, they sent me two things. One is a... USB to MPSSE serial cable, 3.3 volt. Basically, it's an I2C cable because you can actually program a couple parameters on this chip through a computer. So it's an I2C bus program. And we have the evaluation board itself. And let's see here. Here's the actual evaluation board. And on it, you can see a couple items. One, you have the solar cell input, the supercapacitor output. On the top here, you have a three pin for an I2C bus um, interface. This way you can jump on Windows and you can change a few of the parameters. The only two I'm actually interested in is it has a maximum charge current, which this chip handles up to one and a half amps. Even though that solar cell only puts out 100 milliamps, we're gonna set it to one and a half amps just in case, it's, it's no big deal. And the other option that we can change on here is the um, voltage termination. Do we want to set it at 2.5 volts, 2.7 volts? And they have a bunch of different ranges in between that. Actually, I think down to like 2.3. So we're going to take a look at that after we actually test this and see how well it performs. Um, it has a couple different test areas to hook, hook up leads. Basically, your voltage in, voltage out. A couple uh a couple other options for the chip, which uh, doesn't apply to what I'm using it for. And it has a on and off switch for the actual chip itself. Okay, so give me a few minutes to set up the test rig. What I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna have um, two setups. One's gonna be the original version 2.0, which is gonna be a solar cell going through a blocking diode and directly into the supercapacitor. Uh, the other one will be a solar cell going through the development board and then into a supercapacitor. And we'll let them sit outside for an hour with meters on them and we can see uh, which one charges better and how much more efficient this is. Uh, depending upon how more efficient it is, this could mean more light, more capacity. So let's go on outside and test it and then we'll come back inside and we'll hook the chip up to a computer and see what we can program on it. 
Okay, here's a test rig. It's not exactly the most beautiful looking thing here, but basically I got two setups to the solar cells. This one is rigged up here. Basically all it is is the solar cell, the supercapacitor, and it's running through a blocking diode, a little tiny black thing right here, which is what I was using in solar jar version 2.0. This one has a solar cell going through the new MPPT charging chip to charge up the supercapacitor. This multimeter is hooked up to the new MPPT through here and the bigger meter is hooked up to the original version 2.0 and right now I have them shorted out this way no power is going through and I'll start it up we'll wait for an hour and see which one gets charged better and faster on less than optimum conditions since we do have some clouds so that off pull this off and turn the chip on And we can already see just in a few seconds that the new chip is already charging faster than just directly connecting the solar cell through a blocking diode to the supercapacitor. So we'll let this run for an hour and see where it goes. Okay, we just hit an hour and the results are really good. Remember, this is hooked up to the old setup after an hour being in the sun, we're at just over a half a volt. This meter is hooked up to the new system with the MPPT chip, and it just crossed over one volt. So it's a double the charging efficiency on one solar cell. Okay, now we're gonna hook up the uh, development board up to the software that we can program a few parameters on it. Uh, they also as I showed before, it gave a uh, FTDI cable with us. It's connected to the three pin I2C bus, the black wire, the gray wire, and the orange wire. And of course you got the fourth that's clipped off because they don't want you putting power to it that way. Uh, I got power coming in as soon as I turned it on from the benchtop power supply and a uh, supercapacitor just to take the output to this so we don't fry the chip. So let's turn it on. It starts doing its own little thing. Um, make sure you always have the USB plugged in before you start the program, because if you start the program without this on, the program just crashes. It's cheaply coded, but it works. So let me move the camera on over further so you can actually see the screen. We'll start it up and show you exactly what you can do. Okay, unfortunately we're using my wife's computer because she has Windows, mine has Linux, and the software does not work under Wine if you're using Linux. You have to use a, uh, Windows computer for this software to actually work. So after installing it, it makes its own little icon here, ZSPM45XX, since there is a uh, lithium ion battery version and also the SuperCap version, which we're using. So double click on it, go through the administrative problems. Let me open up the screen. Up top here, you have a product selection. There are three options inside of here. You want the second option, which is for the 4523 PV uh, photovoltaic super cap charger. Make sure it's selected to that. Then read status. Everything turns green. You can set it to auto pull and it'll automatically refresh itself once every second. And right now you can't do anything. It just says it's connected. You have to click this button down here that says enable configuration registers. So once you click that, Right below it becomes read config. You can read it, and then you have two options. You have two variables that you can change on here. The first one is V term or voltage termination. Where do you want to stop charging at? You have options from 2.48, 54, 60, 266, 268, 272, and 274. Um, I'm using the 2.7 volt cap, so I figured. Uh, Factory was set for 260, I set it for 266. This way I can just get the last little bit of capacity out of it. And for any reason, you can also change. Your second option is the maximum charging current. You can go anywhere from 50 milliamps and then in 100 milliamp increments from 100 milliamps all the way up to 
1500 milliamps or one and a half amp charging output to the supercapacitor. Uh, default was um, 1.5 amps and I will leave it right there at 1.5 amps. So that's the only two settings you have that you can mess with this, especially the uh, voltage, especially if you have a uh, 2.5 volt cap instead of a 2.7, you will end up overcharging it with the default settings. So once we're done and we've made our settings, right down here, it says right config to double E prom. Click that. It doesn't give you any confirmation. So just pull up reconfig again real quick. Make sure the settings are still the same and everything is uh, done. Now also, let me move the camera over just a little bit to show you. The settings that you change on here, like I'm pointing right now to the, uh, the amperage and here's my benchtop power supply. The changes you make on here are, at, are instantaneous, but they won't be saved until you uh, double click the double EEPROM save on the corner here. So let me pull this up and we'll take it down to 50 milliamps. Now watch the screen. It's instantaneous. Go to 200 milliamps output. You can see it pulls a little more power in. And up to 400. So all the changes for these two settings are instantaneous on the chip, but it will not be saved. So if you power cycle the chip, you will lose these instantaneous settings unless you save it on the double EEPROM down on the side here. Well, after seeing those results and seeing that this charges a supercapacitor just a little bit faster than double the speed, I'm definitely going to go and design a circuit hopefully this weekend so I can send it out to the fab with this chip for version 3.0 of the Solar Sun Jar. Now, when I design the circuit, I'm also going to go and instead of using a single 500 farad supercapacitor, I'm going to run two in parallel. So hopefully with the combination of this new chip and the supporting hardware that goes with it, the original boost circuit, which was the NCP1402 boost converter, I'm going to run the board lengthwise, have two supercapacitors running in parallel, and I'm going to try making a uh, dual purpose either surface mount LED or also give two pins. So in case someone wants to actually use a regular standard through hole LED and bend the light around a little bit. So keep an eye on our channel. I should be back within about a month considering I'll design the circuit this weekend. It takes about three weeks to get the uh, boards back from the fab. And in that time, I'll order all the components that I will need. And I'll bring it up on here and uh, show you what it looks like.